Welcome this morning. Uh, great together. Thank you um, for coming out on this uh, wintry summer's day. Actually, we're, we're into autumn now, aren't we? Yeah, the, even, even the weather's playing the game of change. Welcome this morning. It's so good to gather together. I might just pray and we're going to enter in. Welcome to those joining online. We are sad that you can't be with us, but we're glad that you're able to join in with the journey uh, week on week. I feel like God is leading us as a, as a family together, and so it's so important to catch up um, on those services that you missed. So it's so good that you're able to join us, and uh, we will pray as we enter in. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your call to your church, God, to be faithful, to be your bride, to be purified by you, to be loved deeply by you. God, to have allegiance and devotion that would say you are first and foremost in every one of our hearts and our relationships. Lord God, we just pray this morning you'd lead us by your spirit. You'd lead us with the power of um, the cross, Lord, as we, as we share communion. Lord, we pray that your word would take root in our lives, take root in our minds, God, where we've perhaps let some of the things of the world take over. God, come and reestablish that place uh, of first and foremost in our lives. Lord, we thank you uh, for your invitation to us to enter in together this morning. We choose to accept it. Here we are, God. Be elevated in our praise, Lord God. Be seated in our hearts above and beyond all else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Let's stand, stand together.
for God to give you a lap dance this morning.
and to challenge himself. It's one of those songs that you can't sing if you don't know it. Make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me what you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, be me right now, please. It's powerful worship. And if you don't believe it, then you can't really sing it. It's a declaration of our faith that it doesn't matter what we're going through, that what we have, we're going to give it all to Jesus because we trust that Jesus knows what he's doing. We trust that God knows what he's doing. And so we give it all to him so that he can bring life out of us and give it to others. So as you sing this, I encourage you to think about it. Do you believe this? If so, declare it. Lord, we thank you for the invitation you bring to us to remain, to abide in you, 
to not come and go as, as we please or as we feel. Lord, or even as circumstances may dictate, but thank you for the invitation to remain in you, to remain with you in your ways, to remain moldable, shapeable, to remain held in your care. Just been thinking, you know, today we're, we're um, able to bring communion back into our midst uh, just with the way things have panned out. It has not been a part of our services, but there's just this invitation, I think, at the moment and even in the song this morning to remain with him all the time, to be, to be considering the cross, to be considering his sacrifice of deep love for us daily, even hour by hour, you know, it wouldn't hurt every morning our first waking to be praying, God, I come to the foot of the cross. I bow my knee again. I recognize my life is not my own. I've been purchased with a price. God, have your way in me today. Lord, and that's our prayer this morning. Lord, that we wouldn't be those that would come and go in your presence. We wouldn't be those that would just stop in when we feel like it. But God, you'd have full access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You've arrested our hearts, God. You've purchased our lives with a price, and so we're yours. We give you permission this morning by your Spirit. Speak in and draw out those things that you, you want of us closer to you. Those things that you're able to work in wonders with, Father God, that sometimes we would doubt and we would hold back or reserve or be hesitant, God, but we give ourselves freely because of the invitation you've given us, Jesus. Amen. Let's grab a seat. What a great reminder this morning. It's good news. Let's not forget the life uh, lived for Christ is the best life that our God could ever script for us. He's paid a, paid a price for us to come into under a new authority, not our own, but his. And it's good news. He takes care of us. He provides life in its fullness. And uh, that is the life we desire. Awesome. We just want to welcome um, everyone this morning. It's great to gather together. It's good. Uh, once a week feels like it's not enough, but it's good to be able to do it. And so it's awesome. Uh, we just love your um, engagement and love your presence. We love every part of this family playing its part. And so thank you for coming and bringing it uh, in faith this morning. And stick around after service. Be an encouragement to someone over tea and coffee. Uh, bring what you have and share it uh, with the family. We're just going to pray into uh, just some big significant things. Uh, you know, we could just bring these up one week and then forget about them, but the cyclone effects are probably going to be uh, rolling out over probably even years with some of the farmers and the communities up around um, the Hawke's Bay Gizant area. So we're going to continue to uplift them in prayer and certainly uplift um, our brothers and sisters and churches, just him seeing amazing um, acts of service and love and care being um, extended throughout those communities and there's, there's AOG churches who we're particularly um, closely connected with who are in the midst of all of that and helping out. Um, also going to continue to pray for the earthquake situation in Turkey. Still um, people being pulled out of the rubble and uh, families getting news every day that they've been waiting for, good or bad. And um, just huge upheaval for the people over there. And I want to pray for us also in response even to these things, but also in this season that we would... Uh, not lose our hunger for God, for his presence, for him to do the miraculous, for him to be continuing to transform our communities, transforming our lives and our families, that we would not lose heart or become apathetic. So let's pray for that hunger too. Please partner with me. Don't just listen and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. But let's actually engage in faith this morning. Let's pray in our spirit. Let's join together. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing in the earth. Lord, we thank you for your care, your hand of provision of sovereignty that is moving amongst uh, these devastating situations, Father God. We, we believe you are very present. You are not absent in times of trial, but you are present, God. And we thank you uh, just for the opportunities your people have uh, in the devastation of these um, natural disasters. Lord, we think of those in the Hawke's Bay and the many communities that are rallying together, your love that is being shared one to another, the generosity that is coming out, Lord, draw it out from us that we would be those who are full of compassion and care. And Lord, we pray for those churches, even this morning, Sunday morning, as people gather perhaps in different forms and different ways because of the effects. Lord, may there be just a strength, a fortitude, an encouragement, 
as your people gather together to be courageous in the face of adversity. God, for um, communities to be pulled closer together, not to be pulled apart. And we just pray for your spirit of peace over families, over relationships that may be uh, at tension with the um, discomfort and the displacement, Lord God, that they would know your hand of love, of care, of protection over them, Father God. And may you stir in the midst of all of that change. Lord, for those in Turkey uh, still grappling with the effects of the earthquake, Lord, we had it close by, what have we just gone, the anniversary of... 13, 14 years or something since Christchurch, Lord. And we know what uh, this is like to some extent close to home, but Lord, soften our hearts for those in Turkey who are still facing uh, just huge upheaval, God, and just an uphill climb of rebuild, of reestablishment. Lord, we pray you're covering over those families that are still receiving uh, news, um, often terrible news, Father God, that you would draw families close together, that your spirit would grab a hold of people. This would be opportunity for your church, God, to uh, to grow, your church to be uh, a greater light in the darkness, Father God, for families to find refuge amongst other families, Father God, the family of faith, that it would be that place of shelter, that tree, Lord, that would provide for its community. God, we just pray that there would be uh, a safe haven to come in terms of the people of God for those affected traumatically by this, Father God. And we pray your miraculous healing power over injuries. We pray for miraculous healing of psychological damage, Father God, for what's happened over there, that you would move in power. And we agree with it. We join in love uh, this morning in faith in Jesus' name. God, we pray for our own hearts, Lord, that we would fight the urge to be apathetic. We would fight the comfort of um, things going well, Father God, for us in whatever what form that may be. We would uh, fight the urge to do life on our own, in our own strength, Lord. We would stay humble. We would stay kneeling at your feet, dependent on your presence, God, to sustain us, depending on your life for us, not the life that we can build for ourselves. Lord, surrender our hearts. Do what you need to in our gatherings. Do what you need to in our small groups. Lord, in our prayer meetings, we are yours. May we be that light in our community that would bring hope, that would bring love, that would bring resource, that would bring care, To every person we meet, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fantastic. Please continue in prayer. Uh, We felt a real call to it uh, later parts of last year as we went through the Sermon on the Mount and and just freshly appreciated Jesus' life with his Father as he he ministered. And, And that's very much what we're called to, is drawing into the Father's heart daily and dependent on him for the life that we would live. So let's continue in prayer. We just had our um, Empower Night last Monday. It was an awesome night. Just some great words came out and just be encouraged that God is speaking into our community and uh, it's something that he calls us to partner with. So uh, if you follow on our uh, Facebook page, we popped up a few words that came on the screen. Even bring those up from time to time, pray into them and uh, and believe for what God is doing. Awesome. Um, I mentioned earlier, just for uh, a welcome in terms of guests, if you're with us for the first time, Linda, if you want to wave your hand, she will probably uh, get hold of you at the end of the service. We'd love just to have your information, be able to connect with you um, later on in the week or however that may be if you're visiting or if you're looking for a church home. This is certainly a place we'd love to get you connected. Awesome. Great. Well, without further ado, we're going to uh, welcome Sean, who is very much uh, in our midst to come and share with us. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Sean has spent a lot of time reading, has spent a lot of time in the presence of God, has spent a lot of time actually being transformed by the presence of God, which has led to his um, enthusiasm for the Word and for Scripture and for what God would speak through the generations and into us today for our future, because actually we're going to be history in a little while's time. And what are we leaving for those who are following us? Um, God's been paving out his story for many, many years, over decades and centuries, and uh, he's calling us to be faithful in our part in this time. And just uh, love and appreciate Sean. So let's um, encourage him, let's support him, let's agree with him, let's join with him as he unpacks some scripture with us. Sean, thank you. Thanks. Uh, It's good to be... (laughs) We were just negotiating the time of the sermon. I was like, up, 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 he's down, down, down. Um... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, an hour and 25 is not bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had hoped that in this series on uh, kind of Jesus that I would uh, be talking to you about the kingdom of God today. I had this uh, all mapped out in my mind, and then last week I, I kind of just revisited some of the stuff in the temptation stories, and I just felt drawn to that passage. So I'm sorry, but we're there again. 
uh, I hope that this uh, will be beneficial to you. Um, so the story of Jesus, he kind of starts, and uh, right at the beginning, just before the temptation narrative, we have uh, Jesus' baptism. Uh, and Jesus' baptism is this great moment. Uh, he goes into the water. He has this amazing encounter with the Spirit. Things are going well. The Spirit kind of descends on him in a bodily form. Like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty spectacular. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Jesus hears this voice from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. I mean, that's a that's a pretty that's that, that, that's a nice moment. I I wouldn't mind having a couple of those myself. I think I'd uh, scare the uh, the pants off me. But um, you know, just this audible voice: "Hey, you are my beloved son." Whoa, where did that come from? Um, but Jesus has this amazing experience, this affirmation of his identity, this affirmation that you are the son. With you, I am well pleased. And then. He doesn't stay there. It seems like the, the, the narrative of Luke's gospel says, okay, cool. And then after that, he is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, and I'm like, no, can we just stay here in this jacuzzi of nice revelation, this jacuzzi of affirmation? This, I want to stay in the good stuff. You know, I want to stay with the, hey, this is my son. I'm stoked that you're mine. You belong. You are where you're supposed to be. You are my beloved. But the Spirit doesn't leave him there. The Spirit takes him. Literally, the text says, the Spirit leads him into the desert. Uh, and it's important to focus on the work of the Spirit here, uh, because uh, Jesus, uh, you know, he, he has this amazing encounter, and then you kind of think, well, everything's going to go great now. Hey, I've just had this amazing encounter with God. Now begins the good stuff. Now begins all the wonderful promises and blessings, and that's not Jesus' experience at all. Jesus is led by the Spirit into the desert. And so many times, I don't know if your experience is like this, but when I find myself in a desert or a wilderness, I'm like, hey, God, why did you leave? Hey, God, why, why did you bail? I mean, we were having this moment. We were, we were like, hands up, raised, God be praised. You know, We were like, oh, revelation. Wow, I'm the sun. Wow, that's amazing. And then next minute, um, I'm in a desert and going, hello. <laughs> how, how, wait, wait, how does that work? And it's the Spirit that leads Jesus to the desert. Not every desert you find yourself in is absent of God. Not every desert is one where you're alone. In fact, this seems intentional on God's part. The Spirit led him into the desert. It's like God has a plan and he's moving you towards it. And it's not all about my comfort. Damn it. <laughs> I thought it was for a second. This amazing experience of revelation, this amazing experience of his affirmation of his identity and his sonship is not where Jesus stays. And, and sometimes we can get so caught up in the, but I'm just looking for that, that, that experience again. I'm just looking for that moment again when the Spirit is wanting to move us on. The Spirit is wanting to take us further. And he takes us into this time of, of well, you can either look at it as testings or trials. Um, it's this difficult moment of uh, testings and trials. But testing is something positive. Hey, I want to see what you're capable of. I want to see what you're made of. Testing can be something good. But trial can be, no, the devil comes and it's, I want to tempt you into something negative. I want to tempt you to do something bad. I want you to Forget about this affirmation of your identity. I want you to forget about that beautiful experience. I want you to kind of misuse your power and privilege and responsibility. Temptation is this weird thing. Uh, it's, sometimes we, we can describe temptation between the difference between uh, what we want now and what we want later. You know, I have this dream of kind of July, August, September. There's going to be fresh powder on the mountain. And I'm like, it's going to be amazing. And I'm now close to it. I don't have to drive five hours to go and find some. It's much closer. And so now it's, 
well, what am I going to do now to get that then? So hopped on the bike the other day and, whoa, okay, need to do that a few more times. I uh, went surfing the other day down at the beach with the kids and swimming in the waves. I was like, oh, okay, I need to do that a bit more often. But sometimes it's like, oh, I look at the bike. I'm like, oh, not today. Not today. I'm, I'm just a bit tired today. And the temptation to not do that. So what's going to win, your long-term goal or your short-term feelings? <laughs> And this is not for you. This is for me. I'm speaking to myself here. You guys are not in that boat. So. But, but, but sometimes this immediate, it's, hey, it's right there. It's this immediate gratification, this immediate, oh, versus this long-term, hey, that's what I want. That's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm working towards. It's this conflict between what we want now and what we want later. If you pay attention to the text of Luke, it tells us that he was tempted for 40 days. Sometimes we can read Luke and go, oh, can, Jesus has just, just this brief moment of kind of the devil rocks up and says, hey, get these three things, do this. And Jesus kind of says, no, 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 cites a bit of scripture and then goes on his merry way. Um, no, it's for 40 days he's tempted. That's a long time, guys. <laughs> For 40 days to be confronted by, will you give up? Will you follow another path? Will you forget this affirmation of identity? Will you forget what God's called you to? It's relentless. And let's just remember, the desert, not such a friendly place. It's hot. I mean, it's real hot. I mean, I've been to the Namib Desert, and it was, I think it was like 46 or 47 degrees, and you kind of, you're drinking water, and your throat is dry straight afterwards. It's, it's evil. It's, it's bad. It's not, it's not conducive to, hey, this is great. The desert's a hot place. Jesus is tired. He's hungry. He's weak. He's alone. Isn't that the best time for temptation to come? Man, I've had a hard day. Where is that temptation knocking on the door? Hey, oh, you know, I've just, I'm isolated. Oh, here comes that temptation. Oh, you're alone. Oh, you're hungry. That's the one that gets me. Oh, I'm hungry. Now anything's game. Like, oh, <laughs> feed that hunger. Jesus' experience is difficult. It's hard. See, sometimes we have the Superman view of Jesus. Oh, no, he's Superman. He can do it. He can withstand the temperatures. He can withstand the temptation. No, he's just like us with regards to temptation. And in the desert, when you're alone, when you're weak, when you're hungry, when you're tired, there's no real comfortable places to sleep in the desert. It's not a friendly place. There are wild animals there. I wouldn't just go for a sleep in the Namib Desert. You might wake up with a, a, a nice snake very close to you or a scorpion. or a. It's not a hospitable place. And there's Jesus. And here comes the devil at his weakness. Here comes the devil saying, hey, dude, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? The devil says to him, so if you're the son of God, and that lovely word if there is a bit of a question, because we're not quite sure if he's like, so are you or aren't you? Or so since you're the son of God, how about we do this? How about we go along this path? And I don't really think it's a question. The devil's not, I'm not sure who you are. I, I don't think that's the way the text is supposed to be read. It's kind of, okay, you think you're the son of God. Okay, let's see some of that magic. Let's see some of that power. Let, hey, food, food's good. Food's great. How about you turn some of these rocks into some nice, tasty ciabatta? You know, how about we go for a nice loaf here? You know, you can just manufacture it. It'll be all good. And the temptation is to use his power inappropriately. The temptation is to use his power to provide, 
to get some provisions. Now, there's nothing wrong with the provisions. I like provisions. I don't like being without provisions. <laughs> I remember we went uh, camping around Lake Wakira Moana once and I uh, sliced my bottom of my foot and my buddy Darren has to hobble with me and we decided it would be easier to leave the provisions behind. I like, that was a bad idea. Don't do that. Because <laughs> it was a long walk out. But there's Jesus and the temptation to use his own means and his own power to provide for himself. Because who doesn't want provisions? And there's nothing wrong with provisions. It's the means by which you attain those provisions. How are you going to go about getting that? The devil comes to him. He shows him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil says to him, To you I will give the glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me. And I will give to anyone I please. If you will worship me, it will all be yours. Again, Jesus wants the kingdoms of the world. That's not something bad. Jesus, he's the rightful heir. He's the rightful king of all that is. Jesus is like, hey, all this is what I want. I want all the kingdoms of the world to be mine so that he can be their rightful ruler, their rightful Lord, so that he can serve them well, so that it may go well with them, so that they can flourish. But how is he going to attain that? See, sometimes we have this view that the end justifies the means. Hey, this is a worthwhile goal, so whatever I need to do to get there. And the devil's like, hey, just, just worship me. Just worship me. Forsake your primary allegiance. Give up this love God first above all else. Just, just put that aside and you just worship me. And the same, we, we face the same temptation to worship another in pursuit of what we really want. To give our lives to something so that we can get what we really want. There's nothing wrong with wanting the kingdoms of the world. There's nothing wrong with wanting bread and provision. But will you forsake your primary allegiance to God to get it? Will you give up what matters most for what you want now? And we live in instant gratification culture, man. Everything is like, I want it all. <laughs> I won't sing, sorry. <laughs> the last one, then the devil takes him to Jerusalem, places him on a pinnacle of the temple saying to him, so you're the son of God, right? Well, throw yourself down from here because it's written. And here the devil cites scripture. I mean, this is a brilliant move. You want to get Jesus? Yeah, let's play this Bible game. Let's cite the scriptures. It is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And just in case you want some more biblical justification, another verse. On their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. The temptation to appeal to God for protection. You see, but all of these temptations, you have to forget that it was the Spirit that led you here. The Spirit led Jesus. So if the Spirit leads, the Spirit will give you what you need. You don't have to resort to your own means and methods to get what you want because you've been led here by God. So the devil's like, hey, come on, just do it yourself. Show us some of that power. Nothing wrong with these things. It's just how we go about getting them. So let's look at Jesus' response, the response of the son. I love it how three times Jesus goes and he quotes scripture. Remember that spirit-inspired scripture. He's leaning into the spirit here. He's like, I remember the words that the Spirit wrote. Jesus is faithful to the revelation given to the people of God. He's tempted to compromise the means of the kingdom in order to fulfill the seemingly good ends. But he resists that temptation to use his power for his own needs, to give up on the vulnerability 
and rather to lean into God and to trust God. Eugene Peterson writes this, in the three great refusals, Jesus refused to do good things in the wrong way. He chooses rather to lean in to God. The temptation to accumulate more. He says, no, my priority is to trust God. Man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's not that he's saying food's bad. He would never say that. (laughs) In fact, in Luke's gospel, if you read, Jesus is either on his way to a meal, at a meal, or leaving a meal. Food is very important in Luke. (laughs) Because it's Jesus' way of creating community. He loves to create community around the table. He loves to do life around the table or on the way to the table or having just left the table. These are moments where he just likes to connect with people. And so he chooses to respond with, this is the spirit-inspired word. One does not live by bread alone. What he's saying is life is found in more than just the provisions we have. And so often we can be tempted to embrace a materialistic worldview. Oh no, it's just stuff. And Jesus is like, no, there's something more. There's a God who speaks life. There's a God who offers life. There's a spirit who empowers and gives life. Are we willing to follow in the footsteps of the Son? My friend, uh, Joseph McCauley, he writes this. He says, in the hunger, loneliness, and lowliness of the desert, Jesus stands tall over the existential anxieties that promote the accumulation of goods, the achievement of status, and the acquisition of power. In doing so, he lives out an alternative, uh, an alternate way of being in the world, the way of the kingdom. The Sermon on the Mount started in the desert. It starts in Jesus' own life. And it's kind of like Jesus has got this view, well, if I'm going to teach this stuff to other people, I better be able to live it myself. And I think that's one of the most challenging things about the story is that Jesus isn't asking us to do anything that he himself hasn't already done. I think that's the thing that gets me. It's kind of like, I wish I could say, hey, but you're just, you know, you're just in the jacuzzi right now. You know, you're just having the great experience now up in heaven, angels all worshiping you. And Jesus is like, no, 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 I was there. I know what you're going through. I've been there. I've been lonely. I've been hungry. I've been tempted. I love that passage in Hebrews 4.15. We do not have a high priest who is unsympathetic, but he was tempted in all ways. We have a God who understands our cravings, our longings, our desires, our temptations. And he comes to us and says, come on, there's a better way. Come on, there's another way. Uh, I I, I didn't realize this, but... um, one of my favorite movies is a movie called Unbreakable, M. Night Shyamalan. Um, and for the first hour and 15 minutes, it is grueling. It is a very slow pace. Uh, everything seems to be happening very slowly. And eventually at an hour and 15, I looked at my watch and went, come on, this is useless. This is now I'm getting irritating. Patience is not my strong virtue. Uh, And then this kind of quote comes out. Elijah Price, he's uh, known as Mr. Glass. And he's kind of been this character all the way through the movie. And I don't want to ruin it for you. But he he has this line and the whole dynamic of the movie changes. And the last 15 minutes like, whoa, this is incredible. But it took us an hour and 15 minutes of slog to get there. And then you're like, oh, finally, I realize what you've been doing. And he has this quote where he says, now that we know who you are, I know who I am. And the connection to this passage is Jesus was relying on that spirit encounter. He was remembering, wait, I remember the words of the Father, the affirming words. I remember the encounter of the spirit. And so that even though I'm in the desert now and it doesn't feel great, in fact, it just feels like temptation. It just feels like I want to make things happen. 
He's relying on that encounter. I know that what God said is true. And I choose to trust him. And in light of Jesus' understanding of who he is, the question to us is, will we prioritize God's will over our own desires? Will we prioritize the Lord, our God, and serve him only? Or will we try and force his hand? Hey, I, I want to see if God really loves me. I'm just going to jump off a building here and see if he plays catch. It's testing God. And so often it can be like that. Hey, God, I'm just going to do this and because uh, I know you. Or he would say, God, you will do this. I always get nervous when people like start commanding God. I'm like, whoa. Um, can we just remember who's who here? Sometimes I listen to people's prayers. I'm like, whoa, that sounds dangerously close to you telling God what to do. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Uh, can we just remember Psalm 2, the one enthroned in heaven laughs? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's like when uh, my three-year-old me is like, Dad, we will watch Gabby. <laughs> well, maybe not now. <gasps> Who's the boss here? She is, actually. <laughs> I, I pretend that <laughs> she is. All the way through the rest of Luke, there are other temptations that rock up for the disciples. Uh, Jesus tells a story about the parable of the sower in Luke 18, 13. And Jesus says this, The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these words have no root. They believe only for a while. And in a time of testing, they fall away. Has your faithfulness taken root? And you know, we're doing fearless, and I see that anchored, and I go, oh, is our faith anchored in God? Because you know what happens when a boat's not anchored? It just drifts, smashes into the rocks. I mean, that's the image Jesus is using here. They, hey, the seed, it hasn't taken root. The wind will come, times of testing will come, and it'll just blow away. Are you anchored? Are you rooted? Luke twenty two twenty eight. 28, Jesus commends his disciples. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. I love that that's present continuous. It's not you stood by me in my trial, past tense. You've stood by me in my trials, plural. Still happening, still ongoing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I listen to people and like, man, come to Jesus. Everything will be fantastic. And I'm like, liar, liar, pants on fire. Come to Jesus, everything will be good eventually. Come to Jesus, everything will be really, really good and beneficial and healthy, but it will not be easy. Anybody who says that following Jesus is easy is doing it wrong. <laughs> like, I'm committed. Like, I understand this now. I'm like, nah, it's like being a parent. It's fantastic. But anyone who says it's easy, you are doing it wrong. <laughs> like, this is not the way this works. It's great, I love it, but man alive, it is hard work. So is following Jesus. So is anything good worth pursuing in this life. I want to go snowboarding? Well, there's a hard work regime here. You've got to get through this. If you really want to enjoy that, you've got to do this. Oh, okay. So what do I really want? That or just my present comforts? I know which one sometimes I fall into. Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, another temptation. He prays when he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. It seems like the way to avoid temptation or trials is to pray. And so we're back with the Spirit in Luke 4, Jesus, uh, Luke writes, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned to the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. At the end of the scene in Luke 4, 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. It starts with the Spirit, it ends with the Spirit. If you're not relying on the Spirit, you're not going to make it through these trials and temptations. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. This is what uh, Jesus models to us. That means all the time through the desert, the Spirit was with him. So we've got to pray. 
and we've got to rely on the Spirit. We've got to follow the example of Jesus. None of this is easy, by the way. <laughs> None of this is easy. And so I don't know what your circumstance is. I don't know if you find yourself in a desert right now or if you've just come out or if you're just about to go into one. But the word of the Lord says, don't worry, the Spirit will lead you. The Spirit will be with you. And if you stick at it, if you remember who you are, if you remember your identity as a son, as a daughter, as someone who belongs to God, and you rely on the Spirit, feed yourself with the things of the Spirit, feed yourself the Word of God, you'll be able to stand. Does that make sense? Let me just pray for us. Gracious God, you are good. And we need your goodness, Lord. We need your strength. We need your reminders of who we are. We need your empowering. We need you to help us. Wherever we find ourselves, Lord, would you give us wisdom? Would you help us to remember who you are, that we might be faithful to you? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right, we're going to have communion now. And communion is just a great way to, for you to just have a moment where you can just pause and really remember all that Jesus has done for us, all that Jesus is doing for us, all that Jesus wants to do for us. Uh, communion is this beautiful moment where we can just uh, be nourished on Christ, where we just take a moment and uh, going through the symbolic act, we can just uh, encounter Jesus and his encouragement and his life-giving uh, goodness and kindness. So, I don't know the logistics of how we're going to do this, so I'll hand over to my uh, pastor. <laughs> oh, he did it, he did it. There was a warning about that title earlier. <laughs> Fantastic. We, um, we're just going to have the emblems front and back, so if you're kind of back half or front half, just let's make our way up around the table and, um, and take and... Consider and eat and share together and, um, and trust that God will continue to embed that word in our hearts and um, lead us by his spirit. I think the guys have either got some music or Carl's going to play with them. We'll see what happens. Cool. Let's come and partake. Thank you, Spirit of God, for initiating your work in our lives, God, at, at salvation, God, at the beginning of time, Lord. We we're reminded at youth this week of the Spirit brooding over the formless earth when things were unorganized and not in place, 
The Spirit was already there present at work. And we thank you for your presence in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for the reminder this morning, Jesus, of you going before us, showing us, demonstrating us the way of dependence on your Father, dependence on your Spirit for sustenance. Lord God, may it remind us this morning, God, if we're in comparison at the moment of what the world can offer and what you could offer. May we see the stark contrast, the satisfying nature of your Spirit that satisfies those inner parts, God, that cause craving for what the world cannot provide for, Lord. We turn to you again. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the power of the cross in our lives, God. The power of your life sacrificed and given to us. Undeserving, we receive, Lord, your life by faith this morning. Let that life grab a hold of us, Lord God. And again, may the comparison of what the world would offer, Lord, fall into insignificance because of how great you are, Jesus. We accept your invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sean. Always a treat. And good to go back there with the temptations. Uh, Two weeks in a row is not a bad. Three weeks in a row, actually, because Mike did part two, didn't he? So good. Let's be reading over those things and just letting uh, whatever particular parts the Spirit is leading us into new levels of, new depths of, uh, let it work us over in our quiet times, in the evenings, in the mornings, as we go about our walks in the day, travel time, all of that. Come on, let's just have an, a heart and an ear that's inclined to the leading of God. So good. Fantastic. We had, um, we've had some renovations happening next door, which is good news. But those renovations have had some consequences. Our FOS machine fried. Apparently it didn't like a power surge or something that happened when we changed some power supply. So we have a new FOS machine, but it arrived at the courier depot and I picked it up after 5 o'clock on Friday, opened the manual and it says, you must ring, like first thing in there, you must ring 0800 FOS terminal, whatever it is, to uh, make sure we talk you through turning this on and setting it up. Of course, they're all after hours. Ring us on Monday. Okay, so uh, we're not, we're, we have no FPOS th- today, but we will have uh, this week coming. So whether you want to hold on to that or um, go online to be able to do that, um, please continue your faithful partnership. And also, uh, Mike outlined last week, I think with 30K is the kind of target for completion on the chapel. So please just consider what you're able to do. Um, don't consider what you're unable to do and bring that because we want you to live well and uh, provide for your family. But if there are means and there's ways of you to be able to um, partner with that, we would love to be able to finish that off and just um, have a a larger space to accommodate our church family. So that's very exciting. If you haven't had a look, you're welcome to push past the table tennis tables. Oh, no, we didn't put them back there, did we, Ben? Push past the uh, notice board that's got a picture of the chapel. Have a wee look. Um, It's pretty exciting times, and there's more um, happening this week and next week on that. So I think it's a matter of weeks, not well, it will be months, a few weeks, maybe six to eight weeks. We're just not trying to uh, give you too many hopes and dreams that may be dashed. Cool. <laughs> um, again, just a reminder, if you want to connect with us as a church, if you're um, new and want to know a bit more about us, Linda will be the person or anyone else uh, who's been around for a while, spark up some conversation, but maybe jot your details down on an info card and we better get in touch with you a little later on. Fearless Conference, Youth Conference, is coming up on the 19th to 21st of April. Really quickly, I think it's like six weeks I looked at the calendar, which is really scary close. We made some decisions quite late in the piece on making it happen. But hey, God knew it was going to happen way before we did. I'm sure he's planning lots of great appointments and encounters. So let's pray for our young people. Um, There is a clipboard. If uh, perhaps someone, Sue, if you don't mind, um, or Linda or someone, there's a clipboard just on the um, first aid box at the back there. And we'll pass that around just as we close up the service. Uh, and it does have an opportunity for service. Um, so that can be anything, any amount of time in any area. We just would like to know who might be interested, and we'll contact you about uh, the days that you're available. I think there might be an opportunity for that too, days or times, whether it's in preparation, whether it's even just the day of setup. There's a trailer team. Um, if you can't take time off work, there's evenings that we could do. Um, there's the Saturday after, which is not generally work time for people who don't do shift work. 
you could help us pack down. There's all sorts of areas, but at the very least, we'd love your partnership in prayer. Um, there's only so much we can do, and it's actually not what we do in terms of the physical labor stuff that makes stuff happen in people's hearts, right? And this is the only reason why we're doing this, that God would do things in hearts. So let's be praying um, in preparation that God would prepare hearts. He would prepare our hearts to serve and uh, for him to achieve all that he wants to throughout Phyllis. Cool. Uh, There's also a clothes swap coming up in Tamuka. Did you guys get that one? No. There's a graphic we'll post up on Facebook. Um, So at the moment, we're asking for donations of decent clothing, not stuff that's like, you know, ripped undies uh, and holy socks, but stuff that you would like if someone else happened to be passing it on uh, that you could bless someone else with. Um, It is a fundraiser for Tamuka. Um, and it's just tremendous blessing to the community because, um, you know, who cost of living, apparently clothes is one of the biggest, like, wasted cost things. If you just go through your wardrobe, pull out the stuff you have worn for three months, that would be awesome. And uh, donate it here. Uh, Geordie's cell phone number is on the graphic. There it is. Look. Um, so if you need that, uh, let us know. We can give you, that's Geordie Osborne's phone number. Um, and we can get you connected with donations for clothing and shoes hats, accessorising, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool initiative that they're running out there. Um, there's a New Testament intensive coming up on First Timothy, if you like a bit of what Sean preached. There's plenty more is tucked away in there, isn't there, Sean? Uh, so that's the 17th and 18th of March. Is that a Friday, Saturday? Yes. So you might be able to work that um, as well. Just tremendous just to get into the depths of Scripture. We heard this morning Jesus himself knew what it was to... Um, know the scriptures and you can hear the benefits in his life as he's able to bring that out and apply it with living. That is the beauty of scripture. And so if you want some more of that, please sign up. And also next week, we wanted to let you know that we have the Ames coming through Robin and Margaret Ames. I think that it's only Robin coming in the morning service for us. Pretty sure Margaret's in Waimati. There are a couple of missionaries who do tremendous work um, overseas in Africa and uh, we support them. Our Beyond team is putting on a barbecue that day. So tomorrow, uh, next Sunday, don't have breakfast. Come and have sausages for breakfast. That would be awesome. We're going to do it in between the services only. So if you come for the second service, come early with a hungry belly, and we'll provide some sausages for you. Um, I think it'll be a couple of bucks. So bring some cash. or You could do FBOS for cash. It's probably easier. We're going to have a good time next Sunday hearing from the Ames. I'm doing a tremendous work overseas um, and they've actually been on a real health journey. So we're going to take up a love offering. There's been quite expensive medical costs for um, Robin recently. I don't know how much they're going to outline of that, but we want to outline it because we care and love them. They've had some massive costs, obviously different kinds of medical uh, support over there, and so um, a lot of their personal funds have really just gone into their own medical needs. So we'd love to just bless them with our support. So if you're able in that way to support them too, please come prepared next week. Bring a friend. Bring someone who's interested in missions. Let's pray into it and believe for a great week next week. Cool. Other than that, tea and coffee. Enjoy your time together.